here is the Muldaun Viking Sword of the Battle Card line from Windless. I've had this sword for many months now, and I've used it for many cut tests and many strength tests, and it's performed quite well. Starting with its overall design and appearance, the sword is accurate in overall design. The hilt being a Wheeler Type 7 or a Peterson Type W, depending on which typology you use. We can tell that by the half disc shape of the pummel with the bar guard which is slightly wider than the pummel. The grip length is a good length for someone with medium to large size hands as a viking hilt should be somewhat constricted in fill and give you a tighter grip on the weapon as you swing it as they are heavy hitters and desire to cut as you swing. The wrapping, we're not sure if it's 100% historically accurate, there is a way they could have done it, and it does feel quite comfortable on the hand. The blade is a Gieberg, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Type 3, which we can tell by the gradual tape of, of the blade and the narrowing point, which is not too acute. Talking about the finish, the finish is not historically accurate, though it does look quite nice, better in person than in pictures or film, and it does help protect the blade from corrosion, especially while you're doing cut tests or cutting practice where much moisture from things you're cutting and from your hands get on the blade. And this will protect it from corrosion. And though while storing it, I would still recommend putting oil on the blade. But as you see, it looks nice. Now the edge the sword came with was not very good. It was too steep, probably being an angle around 35 to 45 degrees. So I had to sharpen it to an angle of 25 degrees, which I would recommend when it's putting on these blades from now on, so they have a more usable edge. But it could easily be sharpened and then works quite well. Talking about strength, the blade holds up quite well in impact tests, as can be seen in the video with a slamming against the 4 by blade did not bend or distort in any way, as can be seen. We talk about balance of blade, it's balanced quite nicely for a cutter, being about six and a half inches away from the hilt, which is a good place for a sword meant for cutting, as Viking swords were. As they were not crude bludgeoning tools, but blades meant to cut quite nicely. And overall, it feels good in the hand. So I recommend this sword. The sword also came with a leather sheath, though not as historically accurate, as it would probably have a scabbard, which would be hard with cord. But both fittings on the sheath are finished with the same finish as the sword and then nice in design but simple which looks quite nice. The mounting frog is kind of odd. I've only seen a frog like this or somewhat similar like this historically on the eight piers. But it does work. Though historically it most likely would have had an integrated belt and not 
this type of frog. But this sheath does work, as I will show you. See it fits, and the blade does stay in, which looks good. Now, though the sheath does leave a little white film on the blade, which I'm not sure if you can see in the footage, though it can easily be wiped off. It's quite easy to do. So overall, it's a good sword. Especially if you want a budget Viking sword for cutting practices and cut tests. So I would recommend it.